Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of MSP Business School. My name is Brian Doyle. And as always, I'm here with Rob Rogers and Tim McNeil, my co-hosts. And today joining us, we've got Robert Chiaffi. He's from Progressive Computing out in Yonkers, New York. And uh, I've gotten to know Robert a lot over the last year. And uh, he's here today to share with us a little bit about the history of Progressive Computing. And then we're going to talk about some great things that MSPs need to know. So welcome, Robert. How are you Thank today? You. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm I'm great, actually. I'm really wonderful. It's uh, it's a good time to uh, be in this business with so much changing. And that's one thing sure. about this business: there's always change, right? I love Indeed. that mindset. Very good. So tell us a little bit about how you got started. Um, very interesting, um, long story. So I'll try to keep it short, but. Uh, in the late eighties, when I was going to high school, I met, uh, you know, another fellow classmate. We ended up going to college together and three years after we both graduated, we decided to quit our full-time jobs because that's what you do. Uh, and you start an IT <laughs> Why company, not? Yeah. Uh, you know, and that was 1993. Uh, so it's almost 30 years, 27 years going on 28 years. Um, long before there was a notion of an MSP, right? Mm -hmm. We were right. doing hourly based billing. We were doing software development, believe it or not, all in DOS. Um, and, you know, the business has just changed so much over the years. We're probably on our maybe fifth or sixth different iteration of what the company actually does and what it looks mm -hmm. like internally. Uh, but certainly, you know, three, three plus decades of experience in this industry uh, where the traditional MSP as the audience would, you know, keenly knows about. Perfect. So, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, what that growth cycle felt like, you know, I'm sure there were some, uh, some hiccups mm. along the way and some lessons learned. Tell us a little yeah. bit about what, uh, what kind of came out during that. You know, I, I was, um, I, I think my partner and I admittedly were a bit naive. Uh, I wish we had some more uh, enterprise business experience. I, I was working at GE for a couple of years. I probably could have learned some more things there. Uh, I don't know if the timing of things would have um, would have worked out if I had waited till you know maybe after uh, being married and kids. Then it gets harder and harder to mm -hmm. uh, jettison a career and uh, follow your entrepreneurial calling. Um, but certainly those uh, the '90s were tough because we just we really didn't know what we were doing. Right? We we uh, we were good at um, um, we were good at what we did technically but we, we weren't really so good at thinking about the long-term vision for the company. And that didn't come until much, much later on. So if you are starting out in this business, I would say, you know, you got to have a business coach, you know, you should belong to a peer group. You definitely should be following some sort of business system and you need help. It is not enough for you to just be a smart, you know, book smart and maybe even streetwise person. You need to uh, you need a lot of help to be able to scale a business like this. It's um, it's a complicated mess, honestly. Yeah, and we hear that often. You know, really, the concept of having a peer group and having a business coach has come up more and more in our conversations than, let's say, ten years ago. Right? It really yeah, wasn't for uh, sure. thought of there. But you know, those outside experiences, the ones we haven't had, because like you said, I was in the same boat. You start in a bubble at an age when you start with these companies that you just don't know what you don't know yet, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the challenge. Yeah. How do we yeah. get versed and how do we get educated? And you know, after I sold my first companies, when I actually learned business, that's how I look at it. It was like <laughs> I went and worked somewhere else, and I'm like, oh, so I think it takes a certain amount of ego <laughs> to start a company, right? And then you know, or a certain mindset, and I, that can get in the way because you feel you know, it needs a certain level of bravado. And maybe I'm speaking yeah. about myself. No, maybe I don't think, I think you're smart. No, not at all. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. 100%. I mean, look. But that's look also the thing that holds us back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. That yeah. greatness it's, that we see in ourselves is yeah. hard to let go of that control to somebody who we don't yep. believe can like do it as well as we can. Precisely. And, yeah, which, is why many, which is why many of us don't outsource, right? Yeah. Many of us won't say, hey, I'm not good at marketing, so let me outsource that. Or right. I'm not good at sales, yeah. somebody needs to teach me that, right? So, yeah. One of my favorite I, things is when you meet a young business owner, right? Because the, the, it's always, how's business? Oh, it's great. Never been better, right? <laughs> and then you get about two, three years in, get beat on a bill or two or something else, right? And then the real... <laughs> 
I was just well, you know, man, it's a crime. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Cash flows. You know how it is. This, all of a sudden, it seems okay to let it out, right? You know, it comes, I think that comes with experience too. But uh, For sure. you know, maybe what you can share with us, because you know, you do have a tenure that spans from the traditional bar days going into the MSP days. You know, what was that transition like for you? When did you guys start making that turn? So it was in the, you know, the early 2000s, I want to say around 2006 or seven, we started to poke around with this whole notion of managed services, mm-hmm. not even really sure what it was called back yeah. then. For some reason, I feel like it had a different name. Um, but my business partner actually had come back from a meeting with a much larger competitor who was sharing his experiences in this whole new way of thinking. And I want to say we were pretty early adopters to this. I can't say that we did it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and we certainly learned a lot of things along the way. But we took our old traditional like maintenance contract, if you would, and then started to figure out ways to uh, bundle in our pricing. Now, unlike I think a lot of our competitors, we just decided to go all in where we include just about everything that you can think of, including projects. I know gasp, like, you know, how can you not charge for projects? But the way our model is built, we do everything for you. Um, And so, you know, there was some valuable lessons even to learn there. Yeah. You know, that's interesting that you, uh, you, you include the projects, you know, there's certainly different schools of thought and it tends to weigh in the other direction. Right. I know. uh, But the reality is it comes down to how do you control your costs do you got a good process that can support it? Because at the end of the day, those projects can drive more recurring revenue. So, yes. you know, it, it, it really comes down to, can you be profitable doing it that way? And it sounds like you guys have found your way to be profitable or you would have changed that model. <laughs> uh, more or less. Yeah. I mean, it's stubborn, you know, there's a lot of vowels in my name. So that comes with a certain gene of stubborn. <laughs> um, um, my point about that is you, you, you're, I think you're hundred percent correct, Brian. It's working for us. We found a way to make it work. It doesn't work for everybody. Uh, But whatever your model is, it needs to be profitable. And that's something I think a lot of MSPs don't necessarily focus in on. I've met, I mentioned, you know, prior to us starting this call that I do facilitation of groups. So I have exposure to other MSPs and I can see the ones who, um, who approach the business from a profitability perspective, profitability first. And the vast majority do not look at the world that way. Right. And I think there's something to be learned from those individuals that that uh, can shape really almost any business model around uh, being profitable. Well, and that yeah. goes back to, I mean, you know, just people, and Brian, to your comment of in the beginning, everybody's puppies and rainbows, right? And like yeah. <laughs> for your for your first first couple of years being a business owner, I, I can I can say. Uh, you know, Rob and I, we've adopted prop- profit first here and combination of EOS and profit first, man, they, that kind of changed our company because mm-hmm. Rob and I, up until a couple years ago, we were those, we were those two guys that we always had a better way. Just, yeah. Just ask us. Yeah. You're always <laughs> smarter than everybody else. Had, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there's no way somebody was smarter than we were. And you got to come from my favorite place. Turns out place. that wasn't true. <laughs> you got to come from my favorite place, which is every day I get dumber because I yeah. look around and find out how much I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. awesome, Robert. So, you know, I mean, you know, that transition in the mid 2000s, it seems to be kind of re- really when that industry was starting to kick off and it certainly comes with its lumps, but yeah, you know, it's always great to hear when somebody finds kind of their way. And it sounds like your secret sauce when you're meeting with your customers is this predictable cost model really, you know, where what you need to be done has to be done. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, our approach there is that, um, you know, this is, this is good for you and it's also good for us long-term. So um, the, the, the pro to including projects means that there is no financial resistance uh, to it. So for someone who's struggling with getting a project done for the last two, three years because they just can't fit it in their budget may actually cost you more in supporting that platform or that customer because there's you know, they've been with us for eight years and they're really nice people, but you know, by the way, (laughs) profitability sucks. Um, And you know, you, 
you're waiting for that day that they'll pay for that project. So, I mean, I can, you can argue this a lot of no, different but I, I think that's a, yeah. that's a prudent philosophy that a lot don't look at it, which is you're really investing back into the customer relationship too True. and saying, look, yes. long-term, if I keep supporting and I'll just use an ex old exchange server as an example, we're going to spend $5,000 in the next 18 months just supporting that, you know, on the back end. So yep. why not yeah. cut them over to Office 365 at no charge because be done now, now you're done. Yeah. Now you get your profitability back. It's less phone calls. You're not staffing up for these problems, right? True. So that's where yes. you contain costs. You know, you're a very systemic person overall. And I know we were talking a little bit about that, how you guys integrated EOS into your business. And uh, mm -hmm. I would have to assume some of those, uh, those, you know, those skills kind of play into this model a little bit, because if you're not holding each other accountable, it's going to be difficult to, to do that in a profitable manner. You want to share a little bit about what your experience has been there? I know Tim and Rob are big EOS guys Love and leverage yeah. that and OSR manage as well. I mean, EOS has been a game changer for us. Uh, we picked it up at our former HTG, now Evolve Peer Group. Uh, fortunately, I landed in a group that discovered it all at the same time, and we all self-implemented. So we also helped each other, you know, uh, build up and and learn from it. Uh, but the the structure that EOS provides was. I think the missing element in our business that kept us from meandering or chasing butterflies or, uh, you know, gave us the rudder and even some of the speed in the navigation uh, of, of this company uh, to be able to get us to think uh, very succinctly and with a lot of clarity about where we wanted to go and how the heck we were going to get there. Um, so EOS has just been I mean, you know, it's it's pretty bland and dry. Like once you like go through the the various components of it, and it can kind of feel a little onerous, like getting it going. Um, and then even when you're in the midst of it, but when you look over your shoulder at the last couple of years and all the progress you've made, you know, uh, we've been extremely thankful that we had the fortitude to stick with it. Well, you know, I think it, it eliminates a little bit of the analysis paralysis we can all fall into yes. when we're looking at our businesses, right? And it just forces you to execute. And that's that's really what this is about with the right, speed of change that, you know, you were sh sharing a little bit before our call today that the industry has overall. You don't have time for, you know, deep introspection on how to implement something because by the time you figure it out, it might be something else, right? And uh and you've got to be able to adapt from the business front. I wouldn't say the same steps are taken technically, right? But, you know, from the business front, you certainly need to do that. What are your thoughts, you know, in terms of keeping up with that pace of change in the industry and, and matching that up with business process? Um, you know, there's there's always too much to look at, right? Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll take it back to EOS and say, does it fit? Uh, does it fit our vision? Does it fit our plans? Uh, is this something that, um, makes sense for us from from the, our VTO perspective, right? Our, our vision mm -hmm. traction organizer. Uh, if it does, then that is something that we wish to pursue. But um, yeah, pri I you know I think the key word here, and we still struggle with it today. So you know I don't want to make any um, uh, I, I don't want to try to portray us as you know this unicorn that makes all these great decisions. You know we mm -hmm. still struggle with some basic things like prioritization because it is so difficult to navigate through everything that's hitting your inbox or, you know, your, your feet, your social media feeds uh, or your, you know, your telephone yep. uh, or when you go to shows and you meet new vendors or you talk to peers and they talk about what they do. Um, there's just so much that is out there that can distract you from the big picture. Um, so it requires a lot of discipline in my mind to be able to prioritize those things properly. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit break. about what you're excited about these days at work. You know, what are some of the things that you guys are trying to accomplish that are getting you pumped during these times of COVID when, uh, you know, we yeah. can't be out doing the things we normally do. <laughs> you know, right now, I, I think we're kind of going through a phase of, you know, we've seen some things mature in the marketplace, things like cybersecurity products and services even though there still seems seem to be some flux and new players entering the market all the time, um, different shiny objects that we can go out and sell. Mm -hmm. um, so between that and this whole notion of um, a serverless office 
or a complete cloud solution. Um, these are not new things, but there's certainly more maturity happening in the marketplace. And we feel like now is a good time to revisit that conversation with everybody that has not made that transition or has not adopted advanced cybersecurity protection. Um, you know, it's not, it's really nothing, any, anything all that earth shattering. We really like what we see going on with the Microsoft st uh, stack teams seems mm -hmm. to have burst onto the scene. Well, it was around for a while and everybody kind of knew it, yeah. but yeah, the but adoption it rate, now, I don't oh know if it's COVID or not, but, but certainly in the last 12 months, it's oh, yeah. usage has skyrocketed. Yeah. 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 I feel like I feel like it was already on the upswing, and then COVID happened. And yeah, it, it was just, like an accelerant, right? It, oh my god, it exploded! Up. It yeah. absolutely yeah. exploded in a, in a in a good way, in a very good yeah, way. Totally, yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. And and I think you know when you start looking at all the deep integrations that that has too, it really almost becomes a single pane of glass, which was part of what was oh. keeping people from going serverless in many respects as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and now with everything that has happened, it's uh, the conversations are just so much easier. In fact, they're almost demanding, you know, that we talk about, um, you know, fully cloud solutions, you know, uh, business continuity, resiliency, mm -hmm. you know, business resiliency, things like that. Um, the other thing, um, which, you know, probably a lot of uh, MSPs are probably thinking about is acquisitions. There's tons of sellers out there, but the stat that I heard is that it's still two to one buyers versus sellers. So we're sniffing <laughs> around, we're looking, if we find the right deal of the right size, the right fit, we're going to do it. It's part of our plan. Um, we're actively looking. Um, we actually have, you know, a plan that we're following, not just saying that we're doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, we've involved our marketing team. My business partner is, is leading the charge with that as well. So he's got focused time and energy on it. You know, honestly, you know, it may take us a few years to, to actually get the right deal on the table. Uh, but, but in the meantime, we're, uh, we've got our foot on the gas with our sales and marketing and ramping that up. We doubled the company in the last three years and this year should have kept pace, but we're probably growing anywhere between like 11 and 15%. Not sure. as good as I had hoped, but, um, but hey, you know, hey. stuff happens. Yeah, exactly. I, I got a question for you. So that growth that you 11 to 15 percent growth is nothing to <laughs> that's pretty good going on right now. Right. There's a lot of contraction going on. Yep. So what do you think has separated you from, you know, a, a lot of MSPs that I talk to that are going to be status quo, same as last year, right under last year, barely above last year. And, and you're talking about a disappointing 11 to 15 percent. I am disappointed. So like what? Yeah. So what is, what has done that for you? Like what, what made you, you know, different there? Yeah. I, you know, this, this uh, goes back to uh, what we were kind of talking about earlier. We uh, had to check our ego and say, we don't know what the hell we're doing when it really comes to sales. We think we know what we're doing, mm -hmm. but we do not. Same thing with marketing. Um, and it took us, I think, uh, if, if I can offer any advice is please don't think that you're just going to go subscribe to some class or adopt a process and suddenly magically it's going to change overnight. It took us years of trial and error and figuring th different things I'm glad out. glad you said that. So we yes. invested. Thank you. Yeah, we, Thank we invested you. in our sales process <laughs> heavily and it took us a long time to get it right. And we finally got it right and we're closing bigger and better deals faster than we ever were able to close before. Now, granted, now be mindful that 11 to 15% that I'm predicting for this year includes some contraction and attrition in our business because we do have customers, let's say in the entertainment business that are completely shut down yeah. and their MSP agreements are going, you know, like yeah. to nothing. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we are not immune to that, but we've just, We've invested so much time into those important things that we said, yeah, we think that we're good salespeople, but we actually really suck. Um, and we really, and, and it was eye opening once we finally invested in a system. And I'm not here to promote any particular one, mm -hmm. but the one that we invested in really opened up our eyes to how badly we were doing sales before. And Brian, you said, a, I think a key word earlier too is that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. 
it's amazing how we can be short-sighted sometimes uh, as we're looking to grow our businesses and and once we get involved and once we open up and let ourselves you know embrace the process you realize how much more is out there that can make your life so much easier and i think each and every one of us at least in these four frames on the screen i think we could all say that uh we've kicked ourselves at some point in time in our career saying i should have done this sooner or I should have, you know, changed my thought process a little bit earlier. But you know, it comes with maturity, it comes with time, and it comes with experience, right? It's it's the journey. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All the way through. Yeah. So uh, we've got a few minutes left, Robert. Usually, like how we like to close things out is a little bit, uh, you know, a little have a little bit of fun. You know, one thing we're always interested in, and what do people do in this IT industry where you could sit here and work twenty four hours a day? to put a little work-life balance into your life. So Mm, what what do you like to do when you get outside that office? I love to hike. Um, I also joined um, uh, a boxing gym uh, called Title Boxing. I will promote them. I love them. Cool. Uh, So I don't actually spar in the ring, although I am looking to kind of step it up and do that. It's all heavy bag hitting. I absolutely detest gyms. I'm that typical guy that signs up at like a planet fitness yep. those three times <laughs> and, and yeah, then like and then cancels just, their subscription in 12 yep, months. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you remember to I cancel, went, you're better than me already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to be very athletic and I've always felt like, you know, I'm kind of more athletic, but I could never find something that I really just right, love yeah. to do consistently. And this place is like a half a mile from my house. So I just absolutely get in there, love getting in there. The trainers are all like half my age. Most of the people in there are half my age. Uh, and I just love trying to keep up with them um, and beat them. So well, I'll have yeah. to introduce you to a good friend of mine who's uh, a contemporary of ours who's still boxing as well up in up in Mass. And he used to box over every year as part of the New York City uh, police and firefighter event at, uh, at the New York Athletic Club. Yeah. So he'd love to talk to another person of his... Uh, stature <laughs> in terms of uh boxing because it's tough sometimes with the kids right <laughs> absolutely yeah. but it's uh i really enjoy doing that awesome so tim why don't you take us home with the speed round actually i think rob is going to do this uh, one. today's rob yeah, yeah right. today's rob today's okay, rob yeah this, this one's going to be complicated <laughs> so, all right so here we go all right so question number one <laughs> text talk or teams uh talk Okay. All right. Uh, music, movies, or TV? TV, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm uh, honest. Hey, hey, yes. Thank you. Uh, some good what TV age today. do you want to retire? Uh, before 60. Okay. All right. Uh, Mac or Windows? Uh, totally Windows. Come on. H- has anybody <laughs> said Mac ever in nope. the history of the show? No, one person did. One person did. Um, Oh, I think it was Matt, but anyway. Matt, right. Okay, yeah. Matt Sorry. Yes. Yep, shiny. <laughs> <My ADD. laughs> All right, question yeah. number five. Uh, <laughs> if you could do anything outside of tech, what would it be? Uh, I would love to be an author. I'm actually working on several novels. Oh, very awesome. cool. Type of writer. What kind of author do you want to be? Um, well, I was a big D&D player as a kid, and okay. I would still play if I could. Uh-huh. To convince all my friends to abandon their wives and children. <laughs> um, not that I'm willing to do so. But, right, right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. But sci-fi, big Star Trek fan, as you probably see, at least a long and prosper in the video. Yep, because, yep. Yeah. Um, huge Trekkie. Um, yeah, anything kind of sci-fi. Like I'm a big Stephen King reader, so like even a little bit of that kind of genre in there. I'm actually working on um, two different stories at the moment. Very cool, man. Very yeah, that cool. is cool. Awesome. That's cool. Well, Robert, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. For anybody that's looking to get in touch with Robert, wants to hit him directly, we'll be including his LinkedIn profile on the link on mspbusinessschool.com when we get started. I suggest I you look junkie, him up. By the way. Yes, he is. He'll eat yeah. a lot of good content there. And I was even going to give you a, a little, some props on one. When we talk about teams, Robert, if you go through his stream, you'll find some of his team's trainings. He did some yep. great, him, he and Progressive did some great team's trainings earlier this year to help their customers get started with the process. And uh, of course, this, uh, you know, this episode will be up on mspbusinessschool.com and anywhere you get your podcasts. Robert, any closing uh, thoughts before we break today? No, I just really appreciate the invitation and the ability to speak to the audience and anybody who's watching and or listening. um, You you know, like I said, your 
the best thing that you can do for yourself is just to ask for help and be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, you'd be amazed how much you can accelerate your business just by adopting that mindset. Great Tell thoughts. Tell Great agree. thoughts. Tell All right. Well, until next time, thank you very much, guys. And we'll talk soon. Take, Take care. care.